series plot. So the third part of this activity, once you've figured out that the data that you get is an exact location of the GPS monument, now you have to look at what the data actually looks like. And it looks like this. It's called a time series plot because it's showing over time where that location is, where that uh, station is located. And so basically what it boils down to, and you can get this off um, the websites that support the GPS monuments themselves, each dot represents a daily plot of where it is. And so the time scale, in this case it goes from 2004 to about 2007, and each dot is per day. And the way it's broken up is into a north and south, it's called a north plot, an east plot, and a height plot. And what it happen, what, how it works is that the north plot shows if it's going up, it's moving north. If it's moving down, it's moving south. On the east plot, if it's moving up, it's east. Down is west. And height is simple up and down. Height usually is not used in, when, in this activity because it's really messy. The, it's much harder to determine up and down motion with satellites. So if we were to look at this, what we have to do is we have to figure out in two components where is this thing moving? So is it moving north-south or east and west? And so we take these two components together to figure out where it is. And so what you have to do is you have to look at the scale. So here's the time scale down here. Here is the distance scale measured in millimeters. And basically what this is showing you is a relatively straight line. And so you can use a meter stick. You can do this on an overhead. You can do this just on a chalkboard if you are good at drawing lines. But um, you just take a meter stick and you try to get the students to understand the idea of that it's basically, you want to try to get the straightest line possible. In this case, the straightest line possible, you kind of go like that. And you can go so far as to actually draw a line on there if you want. Because you want it to extend, you want the line to show the distance over on this side. So let's say that that's our line. And we want to figure out how much did it move between 2004 and 2007. Well, in 2004, it was at about negative 11 or 12. And by the time it got over to 2007, it had moved up to about somewhere around in there. So it went from negative, let's say negative 11, to positive 12. So this moved an equivalent over those three years. It went from down here to up there. So it's uh, 23 millimeters north according to this. So between here and here, it moved 23 millimeters north. And that's only north and south components. Do the same thing over on the east side, or on the east and west component. And what you figure out, it started at 2004 right about there, and it came right across about, I don't know, here. And so it went east from about negative 15 to 18, so that's about 33. So about 33 millimeters, in this case it's going up, so that would be east. So we have 23 millimeters north, 33 millimeters east, and so we have this scenario, north and east, and so you do the north, you do the east, and so it went from point A to point B, and then you draw a line between them. But I'll show you how to do that in the next step. So you can calculate this out, and then you can actually get it to be, if you do the math, you calculate how far it went, divided by the number of years that you've got, and you can actually get a millimeters per year measurement. And that's eventually what, it, what you ideally want the kids to go to. So the reason why I do this in my class is because it totally relates to its graphing skills. If they can read a scale, you know, they have an x and a y axis, they do that in all their classes, I'm sure. And so it's just, it's just one more time that they get, to skill, get this idea of graphing skills. And so then they go to this page in the worksheet that has, they, they plot the northern component and the eastern component. They put a dot and that arrow that they draw is the vector along which the monument moved meaning that the ground that the monument is attached to actually moved, in this case, for Nia Bay in Washington, it moved at 12.4 millimeters per year in a northeasterly direction. And so once the students learn how to read a time series plots, they can look at any GPS station's uh, time series plots and determine the direction and the vector at which it's moving. So this activity is designed to show movement along the western margin of the United States, and so you have an area along the coast, slightly inland, and then much further inland. And what you notice is that the western margin is what we call locked and loading. And so there's much less, there's a lot of movement on the coast, there's a little bit of movement slightly inland in the urban corridor, and then further inland 
It has a time series plot that looks relatively flat, which you'll see right here. So this is Othello, Washington, which is eastern Washington. That GPS time series plot is showing relatively move, no movement in the northern south direction, nor the east-west direction. And so what you end up with is just a very, very small, small, small amount of movement north. And that creates this picture of the locked and loading. The fourth step, once they learn how to read time series plots, and there's a series of questions that go along with that to make sure they understand it, is that they plot on this all those different vectors. And so you get the idea that the coastal stations are moving very far, the urban corridor stations are moving slightly less, and eastern, or sorry, east of the Cascade stations are moving very little. And so they get this overall picture. And then what you do is you take that and put it on a map that looks like this that shows the continental edge is moving much farther compared to urban corridor, which is still moving in the same direction, and all that's compared to eastern, which isn't moving at all. And so you have this scrunching effect as the Juan de Fuca plate is subducting underneath. It's kind of dragging that continent, the edge of the continent, a little long with it, and you get this bunching, and, uh, and that's, called, that's what we call locked and loading. And what the students do at this point in time is this map is on their page. What they actually do is they go back to their little gumdrop and they have a little piece of transparency and they take that piece of transparency with the gumdrop and this is all done flat on a piece of paper and they actually model that that gumdrop station is moving along that arrow which is the vector that the station is actually moving. 